Hello, my name is Paula Lopez, and I graduated with my bachelor in art degree in art studio with an emphasis in painting and drawing. I graduated in 2014 and got my master's in art studio with an emphasis in painting and drawing in 2018. So I think the best way to explain my work would be to go back to when I started learning about art history at an actual like collegiate level. You know, we learned about cave paintings first and one of the things that struck me was the instructor. He basically said the artists were the historians. They were the ones that kept the stories. They, you know, I mean, there was oral history, but the, they knew better and they decided to create this story. So when you're creating your work, you're creating your own story, whether you know it or not. And for me, I was like, oh, okay, so that's kind of an answer. I'm gonna start creating my own story. So my work for undergrad, it just became self-portraiture. So I started very literal. I started very uh, figurative. Um, I got really down on myself when I couldn't make myself look like myself <laughs> based on my skills. Or, or when I did, I thought that rendering was, you know, the be all end all. And I thought, you know, like, oh, I'm, I'm really good at art because I can render something really well. And especially grad school kind of shook that out of me. <laughs> That's great, you can do what a camera can do, but what can you do as a human being um, when you're creating? And so I really got into digging deeper, what, who am I kind of thing. I hadn't before seen representation of queer artists. I haven't seen representation of queer artists of color. I hadn't um, delved into that, you know, kind of reference point. So I just sort of dove right in and, and went for it. And then with the research, I, I found artists and I found um, inspiration and I found what really drove me and what was the narrative there? Was it just representation or was it representation with my narrative? I kind of had to really settle down on my content and I think for me it really landed on the exploration of sexual identity and remembering that in a positive light. The easiest way to think of it is when you're a kid and you start to feel the butterflies in your stomach what does that look like? And I wanted to um, encapsulate that in my work. And so I did a lot of layered work, a lot of old imagery uh, of myself as a kid, a lot of sort of sexualized figures, a lot of gold and, and shininess. And, and so I, I kind of just try to keep it as appealing as possible and keep it in the mind frame of memory and positive memory. When I ended, I was, I was really getting into symbols and how symbols play a role in our lives in general and how a two-dimensional shape can inform you about something. And I'm like, well, that, that's what art is in general. That's what a painting is. It's a two-dimensional shape on the wall and it's informing you, it's giving you a message. And that has always existed, whether it's a symbol of, a symbol of a heart or a symbol of a hand or a symbol of whatever else. And so I've really stuck to some of, the, some of that imagery just because I think it's so powerful and so simple. And I think some of the best art is simple and powerful. I wanted to celebrate memory, uh, celebrate memory of exploration and identification and figuring out who I am. But memory, for me, tied into the material. So what was my first way of creating? And my first way of creating was with crayon and paper and a pretty like elementary palette of just, you know, the 12 colors or whatever um, that you get in that, like a crown box. So how would I transfer that to my work now? Um, I decided to use paper and get some of those drawn lines and that quality of the origins of my creation uh, process kind of thing. So I was using watercolor, I was using uh, wax crowns, I was using kind of everything that, I, that would apply to a two-dimensional paper format and that could be supported by a two-dimensional paper format. And that spoke to this exploration into defining who I am and, and, and how I identify. I have finally landed a teaching position, so I'm teaching digital art in um, a high school area, I guess you could say, in the high school capacity. And it's a really fun new chapter for us at my school, and it's been great just using my skills and using my knowledge and using my connection with the students to get some really cool artwork and uh, just excite them about the subject matter. We just started a brand new kind of field of visual art at the school, and I'm so excited to spearhead that and develop my skills 
as we go also. And for our class, I think a lot of what I try to do is take the esoteric out of art and just make it relatable and point out skills that we already have when being shown all sorts of media. We know what looks good, we know what doesn't look good, we know what we like, we know what we don't like. So I try and bring that to light and not make it sound all artsy fartsy, <laughs> for a lack of better words. I try and just make it, you know, as relatable as possible. Um, I think my students responded most to our illustration unit because it's let them explore without making a mess. Digital art also allows you to undo and delete and uncheck and fix things really easily. So it's very forgiving. And I think that that is really helpful for new artists as opposed to some of the more traditional means of where you're two hours into a painting, you're covered in paint and you hate what you're looking at and you can't fix it kind of thing. So digital art is a way more forgiving and I think that they respond to that. In terms of artists, I have honestly been trying to bring some of my um, art history traditional artists that I've seen and um, keep it as contemporary as possible. So we just did a, a, a section on contrast and I used a lot of Bisa Butler's imagery and she's a two-dimensional artist. She does these really colorful, vibrant portraits of not only like historical figures but also pop culture figures and she's an African-American and so she has this sort of lens that's a lot, uh, it's way different than I think maybe high school kids are used to, especially if all they know is Picasso and Van Gogh. So I'm trying to feed in some sort of, you know, relevance to today's times and also just kind of open your eyes to new possibilities and new examples. My advice for current Hornets, well, art students for sure is don't be too proud. Um, the art staff there are all great, committed, valuable, respectful human beings, and they only want you to succeed. Um, but they will get on you if you don't do your work. Like, <laughs> that, that, that's, just, that's just bottom line in any department. Uh, when it comes to critique, take yourself out of it and really hear and reflect on what is being told to you. And of course respond, you know, to, to how you, to, to what you need to respond to, but know that that message is constructive. It's constructive criticism. So it can be, it can get kind of tiring, um, but it's all there to help you. And to anybody who says that art is not a difficult major, is clearly not an art major. If anything, we never know the answers until they reveal themselves, right? So we never know when we're done until it's done. And uh, if you're a student, go and do as many club and athletic and extracurricular things as you can when you can. Because for me, even though I was in college in three different aspects, it went by like that. And those are the times that are really important, I think, and they really form your life as an adult for the rest of your life. So just take your time to enjoy, stop and smell the roses kind of thing. I literally use, all, I use it for all of my audio for my class. So any video that they have, any demonstration, any follow along is from this bad boy.